Okay, then, let's go for a take on this one. We have red light and bell, please. Now, keep it quiet. Turn over, please. Robert Neeston, author, poet, playwright, a man with a string of successful plays and films behind him. A man for all Neesdens, a lion in Neesden, an Anne of a thousand Neesdens. He needs solitude to work, living alone in the country with his wife, children, dogs, and the occasional television crew. He describes how the idea for the film came to him. I was in the cinema at the time, just me, my wife, and children, and dogs. I was watching this film. And suddenly I thought, a film. That's it. A film. It was so simple, I almost wept. He takes his idea to famed producer-director Brian Neeston. I saw it as a film about people. Yeah, yeah. People who need people. People who need people, yes. Mm. Big people with universal emotions locked in noble conflict. A king, a queen, a bishop. Fine language, cathedrals, horses. Neeston works furiously on the first draft. Writing is exhilarating, agonizing, exhausting. Months later, he delivers it. Yes, I like it, Bob. Yeah. It's probably a few answers too long, but it's terrific. Yeah. Brian Neeston postpones his scheduled spectacular, When Diana Dawes Ruled the Earth, to concentrate on Robert Neeston's project. Now it's a question of casting. His mind clicks into action. Why not Peter O'Neeston as the Archbishop and Richard Neeston as the King, two giants of the B.O. who could set the screen alight? They leap at the chance of playing with each other. Ah, oh, that's much better. Yes. Yes. Shooting begins on the crowning glory. Richard Neeston prepares for his role. Well, um, I've always wanted to work with Brian and, uh, when I heard that Robert had written the script, well, I didn't have to read it. Uh, the money is neither here nor there. It's in Geneva. Now watch the combined greatness of Peter O'Neeston, Sir Ekim Neeston, and Richard Neeston in the electrifying cathedral confrontation. <laughs> My Lord Bishop. My Lord Nathan, what est? I est, my Lord. My dear Lord Nathan, when I say what est, I mean what is it? I taste my teeth, my Lord. That is why I est. I'll ask again, Lord Nathan, what ails thee? Uh, mild and bitter, how very kind. To ease these parted lips. <laughs> Speak not of mild and bitter in this holy house. Forgive me, my lord. Like the humble snail, I kneel silently at thy feet. I crave thy holy indulgence. Could you possibly extend the Episcopal hand and bear me up again? What is thy news, Nathan? Brave news, my lord. Thy cousin Hal, the king, God's instrument upon this earth, doth bear down upon thy holy haven like a black falcon upon his innocent prey, the lowly doll. Get to the nub, Neeston. My lord, forgive me. I kneel like a cringing spaniel that hath his master most grossly offended. What will the king? Divorce, my lord. Divorce. In now he frolics with his fancy mate, the strumpet bell. There can be no divorce. My lord, the king cries that the queen is barren. He yearns for a son, and Nell is big with his child. <coughs> but his, methinks I hear his kingly footsteps. I must away. And I must pray. <laughs> John Bishop of Beckentry! Be still, this is God's house, I must do vespers. Then let God wait. 
Or do we not read that his patience is infinite, whereas patience is a commodity most absent from my nature? I needs must talk to thee most pressingly for a favour. I howl the taverns buzz with rumours of thy indolent adultery. I love her, John. I love my Nell. Each time I see her, my heart becomes a thousand fluttering larks. What of the Queen and honour of England? My Baron Bess. My Baron Bess gives me neither princely nor a king's comfort. Then shall I pray for thee. Good job. Dost thou not remember those times when we were young? And used to go a hunting and a whoring together. Where is that John that used to wassail and rut like a mountain stag? That John is dead. And dead shall be the other John, unless annulment of these sterile bonds shall be granted. Wouldst have me spawn a bastard? Hal, this is thy twelfth marriage. The Pope grows weary of thy constant inconstancy. Yet should the Queen agree, then one more time my quill shall spill thy will upon the scroll, and then to knell with you. And now, perhaps, I needs must pray. shooting completed, these two great stars relax over lunch. Waitress. For me to start, I think compote of grapefruit, small segments thus engendered in a vase. For me the same, identical. And then to follow, yes, fried fillet of place and lemon and there with sage and onion sauce, garden peas, fresh from England's lands and roast potatoes too. For me to follow very swiftly, pork sausage and onion turnover with cabbages from the study dance, roast potatoes from England's blazing ovens. And then to cap it all for me, semolina milk pudding to engender all those juices which do aid the digestion. For me, nothing. Nothing, my lord? Nothing, my lord. <laughs> Two piping hot black coffees, then. <laughs> Finally, the passionate bedroom scene between the king and the queen, played here by Dame Raquel Neeston. Bastard, bitch, adulterer, flat, whoremonger, fishwife, pig, cow, milk, please. So you met someone who set you back on your heels? Goody, goody. So you met someone and now you know how it feels. Goody, goody. Please release me. Let me go. For I don't love you anymore. Her lips are warm. Her yours are cold. Release me, my darling. Let me go. So you gave her your heart too? Just like I gave mine to you? Goody, goody for you. Goody, goody for her. And I hope you're satisfied, you rascal, you. Well, bless my soul, what's wrong with me? I'm shaking like a leaf in a buzzing tree. My house is stuck, but I'm, I'm as, I'm as wild as a bug. I'm in love. I'm all shook up. Let's twist again, like we did last summer. Let's twist again, like we did last year. The party's over. Bye-bye, love. Bye-bye, happiness. Hello, loneliness. I wish that I could die. <laughs> Is that all there is? Yes. We have no bananas. We have no bananas. But then... <laughs> yummy, yummy, yummy. I've got love in my tummy. The film complete, Brian Neesden returns to his wife and family. God, it's Martin to be hand. <laughs> Bob, you fix yourself a drink and I'll go and get Vera and the kids. Right. Ah, marvellous. Vera! Vera, we're home! Vera, it's Brian! At last, Vera. author and director can relax Vera. and forget the agony of filmmaking. Vera! Vera! That's very strange. She was here three years ago. There's a note here, actually, for you. Ah, thanks. Look at that. 
Goodbye forever, love, Vera. My God, what a fantastic title. It's a marvellous title, isn't it? I see it as a... I see it as a film, a very contemporary film. Yes, a film, a film. And so, out of an ordinary domestic incident, a new idea is born. A new idea for the making of a movie. Everybody's talking.